So if I can um, introduce our next uh, speaker. So um, Jerome actually resides in Langkawi and uh, he's a publisher, a translator and a writer and he's the founder of Editions Gentayu, a publishing house dedicated to the translation of Asian literature into French language. Perhaps later, Jerome, you can share with me the meaning of Gentayu with us, with all of us, yeah? And the, uh, where the word came from. And uh, together with Georges Voisse, he co-edited the On Pony de Pierres. I'm not sure whether I pronounced that correctly. Um, a collection of gems, is that? A handful of gems, a handful of gems, yeah. The first collection of French Pantone ever published. And uh, on that note, to welcome Jerome. Limau kasturi dari Batawi, tidak berduri berpohon rendang. Dari Eropah menetap di Langkawi, Terima kasih Tuan Jerome, sudi bertandang. Silakan. I'll use this. Hi everyone. Very happy to be here. Um, so you, just to answer your question just now, you were saying where, where does Chentayu come from? Uh, it's actually uh, the name of this uh, mythical bird that was uh, part of the Ramayana epic. And uh, it's uh, an epic that actually has traveled around a lot of countries in Asia and has settled in, uh, in a few... Uh, there are a few versions uh, in Thailand, in Indonesia, etc., etc. And Jantayu is actually the, the Malay version of the name Jatayu. Jatayu is the original... Uh, a name from the Ramayana, and the Malays have actually adapted that name to Gentayu, and Gentayu is supposed to be residing somewhere on the island of Lanka, and because I, uh, in the Malay culture, they they thought that maybe Lanka is Lankawi, so Gentayu actually is a bird that resides somewhere in Lankawi, and uh, so because I, I am myself based in Lankawi, I've decided to call the my publishing house Edition. Gentayu, here you go. And the bird is of course a, a nice symbol of, uh, of traveling without having to bother about borders. Thank you, yes. So I will start my talk on uh, Pantun as a celebration of friendship. So you might know that in the Hikayat Hangtua, uh, there is this one famous scene in which all the five so-called brothers of Lima Bersadara. Um, so there's, of course, Hang Tua, Hang Jebat, Hang Kasturi, Hang Lekir, Hang Lekiu. All of them, they gather to bathe in a forbidden, uh, to bathe in a forbidden fountain and to pick fruits and flowers to rejoice with. Uh, in that scene, in their merriness, they start to banter and to, and each of them actually start composing one pantun for the others. That scene is actually the only scene uh, throughout the Hikayat in which pantun is, appears so prominently. It is used in the form called Burbalas pantun. And at that moment, it comes as an unexpected poetic break from the, uh, in the otherwise swashbuckling narrative and in the of the first part of the hikayat and it forms it serves as a form of a dynamic dialogue to emphasize our five heroes youthful and feisty temper but it also uh, symbolizes their loyalty uh, to their lord and unity in fighting in his name there is a certain sense of rogue friendship uh, in this that transpires in this exchange of pantun uh, it is a, French, a friendship, though, that we all know will eventually be betrayed uh, for maybe loftier ideals. So when I think of our group of early pantouneurs, I sometimes imagine, imagine ourselves as the five heroes. And uh, if you can click on the next slide. Yeah. So George is clearly the Laksamana, yes? Hangtua, the great Tuntua among us. While Renuga, Serge, Jean-Claude, who is not here today, uh, and myself, 
Well, we, are, uh, we share the, the four other roles in this poesy of uh, feisty poets. But uh, perhaps uh, a more fitting and less tragic name for our group would be something that George already mentioned, uh, the Musketeers. So yeah, the Musketeers. And uh, it's probably more fitting and more in line with our shared French culture. But then the Musketeers are only three, yes? And uh, D'Artagnan is the Laxamana and, and in the gang, but it doesn't entirely do justice to the full group of us who embarked on this adventure of reviving the, the pantoon uh, form with French-speaking readers. But you see, it's kind of the same, huh? yeah, the Jangut, almost some... Uh, only one, maybe that's one, that one is me, la, less John Good. La. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, the, uh, I say reviving the French, for, the form of Pantun with French speaking, because as we saw, uh, Pantun had already been brought to, uh, to French readers two centuries ago, or even earlier, as George mentioned. But at that time, the form just uh, didn't stick. Worse, it went on to be twisted and to be transformed to the point of losing its original substance. Our mission was therefore clear. Uh, we had to make use of the World Wide Web to share the original rules of Pantun with the Francophone public so that they could in turn write the authentic Pantun in French. So I first met George in 2012. At that time, you had just been working on your Sankanti book, and you were giving book talks in KL to promote your work. I had been living in Malaysia for four years, and I was toying with the idea of maybe launching an online literary review dedicated to books uh, from and about Malaysia, something that actually turned up to become Lettres de Malaisie. So you came to visit me in Langkawi and you encouraged me to carry my project through, which I did. You also suggested we use the platform to give readers a taste of Pantun and to invite them to try and invite, invite, them, to, to, yeah, invite them to write some Pantun themselves. So for all this, I am very grateful, eternally grateful, George. Thank you very much. So here's a little Pantun I wrote. Or you, so, oh, okay, yeah. switch, switch. That's Langkawi, okay. Now, Pula Langkawi. So this is actually the first two lines of the, the uh, Semba, uh, Semba Young. Semba Young are actually uh, from an original traditional Pantu. And I changed the, the second part. Pula Langkawi, Pantainia Inda. Kunung Raya Tinggi Menjulang. Puas Menanti Bertemu Suda. Pagai Bertau Bunga Kiambang. Isles of Langkawi with beautiful shores, Mount Raya towering up high. Content now that we have met, like two shell flowers side by side. <laughs> so the translation, the first, uh, the Pembayang was actually translated by Renuka a while ago. And I, I got the help of uh, Brigitte to help me with the Maksu. Akleha, Brigitte, who couldn't be here today, but... Uh, um, so then um, the second person I, I wanted to give thanks to is Serge. At about the same time, I had been in touch by email with uh, Serge, Serge Jardin, who is a curated list of books from and about Malaysia available in French I happened to, have, to find online. Uh, that list was to become a major feature of the literary journal, uh, Lettres de Malaisie. It serves as its main backbone its main structure with reference pages for each of the books you had carefully listed over the years. Not only was the website giving insights on uh, contemporary literary Malaysia, but thanks to you, it also served as an archive for what had already been published over the past decades. So for all this, thank you very much, Serge. I am eternally grateful. And here's a little pantoon I wrote for you. So again, using a traditional Malay Pantun as a Pambayang, and then I changed. 
this Maksud Sudarobo Kotamalaka pada cerita terus terbayang pentun Perancis kazana kita Nusantara ke Paris sudah berkembang. And again, I think I have to thank Bridget Kakleha here to help me with the with the second part. Now, from there, it was only natural that the three of us would meet soon after in KL. It was at the Alternative Book Fest held in Central Market in June 2012. And Pantun was our, one of our many topics of conversation that day, and it, it all materialized with the very first issue of the Pantun Review, whom, which you saw earlier in one of the presentations. And uh, so it was published online in September that same year, 2012. It contained mostly contributions by George, Serge, myself, Jean-Claude. No, so that guy with the spectacles that you saw earlier in the, uh, in the previous slide. Uh, Jean-Claude, so he's a long distance pen friend of ours uh, who is based in, in uh, Luxembourg, sorry. And Renuga, you were to wait for the second issue of the Pantun Review to actually contribute. But we all know, <laughs> we all know that as the one person who had to endure George's eccentric love for Pantun for so many years. <laughs> and as George's muse, you are an essential part of the founding crew of our Pantun adventure. So for all this, we are all eternally grateful. And here is a little Pantun that I wrote for Renuga, using again Pembayang. Banyak orang bergelang tangan, sahaya seorang bergelang kaki. Many orang berpantun bosan, kumpulan kita berpantun ciki. So the rest is history, as they say. Over the past 12 years, each of us went on to write many, many pantuns, though not as many as George did. 33 issue of the Pantun Review, as you said, have been published, and hundreds of French poets young and old have been instructed in the art of Pantun. We held workshops and we even turned ourselves into book publishers, Lemongrass, Cavolu, Gentayu, in order to spread the word about Pantun. Together with, together with a small but tight group of Pantun lovers, George also goes on to organize events around France in various locations from Henri Fauconnier's birthplace in Barbezieux to Lyon, from Brittany to Bordeaux, all this in the name of Pantoun, uh, our little Pantoun, as we call it, notre petit Pantoun. But just as importantly, all this as a way to cultivate our friendship. What, start, what, started, out 12, what started out 12 years ago not only opened my eyes, I think it's okay, yeah. What started out 12 years ago not only opened my eyes on the fascinating aspect of Nusantara culture, this universe in a grain of sand, shared among a variety of peoples, but it also brought me true friends. Each of them very different from I, each of them way more learned than I, friends whom I'm indebted to for taking me along this illuminating ride. George, Renuga, Serge, but also Jean-Claude, but also Prof. Muhammad Ajisale, who couldn't be here today, but also Kakleha, Patricia, Mavoie, Kistila, Cédric, all these are French people who took part in our, in our review so far, and I want to thank them here. I can't name them all, but if I were to summarize my feelings of gratitude in just three traditional pantoun, here are the three ones that would obviously come to mind. Next. The last one. 
Isang emas bawa belaya masa sebiji di atas peti. Hutang emas dapat dibayar, hutang budi di bawah mati. Now, to go back to our hikayat hangtua. To go back where we started to that passage in the first part of the hikayat in which these five pantun can be found. I'll try my hand at fixing one of them. As I mentioned, all five pantun are a call to unity in the face of enmity, a pledge, to, a, a pledge of loyalty to the Lord before anything else. But this here is the one composed by Hang Tua, the Laksamana himself. Yeah. Lokan Melata di Perahu Bela baling bertanduan, bukanlah aku tiada tahu, akulah ul balang minta lawan. What if, instead of always fo focusing on finding new enemies to fight with, our feisty Hang Tua and his so-called brothers had chosen to compose pantun on true friendship? What if, instead of always being cocky and proud and looking for trouble, they had chosen to let down their guard once and to sincerely open their heart to each other. Could the fate meted out by Hang Jebat have been different then? Could Hang Tua have understood his closest friend unwavering loyalty to him and to justice? So these are questions which, in a way, find their answers in the second part of the Hikayat. In that second part, Hang Tua is a different man. Is no more a warrior, is, no, is now a traveler, an emissary of Malacca to foreign lands, someone with a more mature, a more open and diplomatic mind. No more charigado. The Laksamana is a free spirit at home anywhere, holding the universe in his hand, just like a pantun is but a grain of sand holding a universe within it. So if we were to revise and fix Hang Tua's Pantun, maybe we could change it in this manner. Lokan melata di perahu bela baling bertanduan. Memang aku tiada tahu. Akulah musafir mencari kawan. Wouldn't that be better? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Jerome. And. Um, I really enjoyed that, and I thought, predictably, with the three musketeers, you chose to be Vincent Cassel, the best looking, yeah. Anyway, thank you very much. Yeah.